Our next presentation is titled Comedy Central's Multicultural Dilemma. Our presenters are Shannon Cook, Senior Vice President, Strategic Insights and Research, Comedy Central and Viacom Entertainment Group, and Tasha Space, founder, CS Space. Help me give them a warm welcome. Thank you, Ken. Good morning. Um, I'm afraid I woke up with a little bit of a cold, so forgive me. Um, but uh, so we'll go ahead and talk about our dilemma. Oh, I think we need to move forward one. No, we don't. Um, Anyway, about eight years ago, Comedy Central started our transition away from being a Gen X-centric uh, brand to embracing millennial values and sensibilities. Um, you know, and as part of this journey, of course, we did what everyone in this room did. We did a whole lot of research, really extensive consumer research to understand our millennials, understand their uh, sense of humor and their relationship. Um, uh, to comedy and the role that comedy plays in their lives. We were really successful in this transition. Um, we thoroughly, completely get our millennial guys. In fact, I would dare say everyone walking down the halls of Comedy Central um, is an expert on these guys thanks to the awesome work that my awesome team and I did. Um, but it did become pretty clear that we were missing an important perspective um, an important missing piece of that millennial story. Um, the truth is a lot of the insights came from um, our current viewers and as such it felt very white centric. Um, therefore, while it was true we thoroughly get our guys, our millennial research was actually pretty incomplete. Uh, we weren't listening to or understanding a really vital, very large part of the millennial audience, and we had to get it right. Um, you know, Comedy Central's goal is to be the number one comedy brand for all millennials, so we had more work to do. Uh, we, uh, and again, we do what everyone does. We did more research, a really big, uh, you know, large-scale consumer study to better understand how race impacts um, people's comedic choices, and certainly how our brand could do a better job of appealing to a multicultural audience. Um, and this study was as large um, as all the previous millennial research that we had done before. And when we got to the end of this journey with all of our insights and all of our reports and data, um, we had a lot of information, but what we found is we were lacking in true understanding. And let me say, it was great information too, but in hindsight, what I can see now is that the complexity of the topics that we were trying to navigate uh, millennials or youth, plus sense of humor, plus the role of race and ethnicity in humor, and the role of humor in identity, and the role of race in identity. It's a lot. Um, it could not be understood through traditional consumer research alone. We couldn't just talk to our fans, our viewers, um, uh, and, and get this, because race and humor deal with really implicit um, aspects of culture rather than explicit or more obvious um, aspects of culture. And as such, people are oftentimes um, unaware of how these implicit uh, cultural forces may be affecting them. What? What did I just say? Uh, what that means is that it's hard to talk about comedy. It's hard to talk about why you like the comedy that you like. It's hard to talk about race. Um, but when you talk about, again, race and comedy, the role that they're playing on each other and the role that they're both playing on your life, you guys try it. It is hard. Um, but that was our challenge. That's what we had to figure out because you know our internal stakeholders, they needed it. Uh, they were waiting for this research and we needed to share it. And we spent a lot of money on it. Um, and pressure was really mounting to, to get it out there. Um, but it just wasn't ready. And every time researchers release work that isn't truly ready, you know, we hurt our own worth as professionals. We devalue what research is truly capable of. Barry talked about it earlier. You have to be patient in that valley. I love that. Um, so, and we just weren't gonna risk it. We weren't gonna risk it with a topic as important as this. And so we needed to take a beat fill in those missing pieces that would help us create understanding and would put into context all this information that we already had. And so that's where we turned to cultural analysis. And for us, that was the missing context that we needed. So consumer 
insights and talking to consumers, of course, is always, always going to be important. But to make an analogy, the consumer is like the state of the tree, but all of the dynamics of the forest that are influencing the state of the tree is what we call cultural analysis. And sometimes to better understand that tree, you need to study the dynamics that surround it. On Monday, Stan from Unilever in the opening keynote, he talked about the expanding skill sets that we need in today's data environment. The first one on his list was human and cultural understanding. So it's not a coincidence that we're talking about something similar here, because the more complex the world gets, the more important it is to be able to have a contextual narrative to be able to interpret and understand what we're hearing and seeing and observing from our consumers. And that's exactly what this cultural analysis helped us do and helped Shannon with her previous investment in taking all of those amazing insights and putting them into some context. So what did we do? Um, this is just a quick synopsis of everything. But Shannon had all this amazing, great research they had done, great qualitative insights, um, really good in-depth understanding of talking to their consumers. But as Shannon said, it's very hard to talk about these things. So one of the things we did is we took the most popular comedy content for whites, most popular comedy content for blacks, most comedy content popular for Hispanics, and we had story experts analyze the underlying narratives and themes around those humor narratives. And what those story experts were able to do was actually pull apart when do those things differ from each other. And now we can put in context what people are telling us about why they like certain comedians or not. It's very hard when you say, why do you like someone there? Because they're funny. You know, it doesn't give us a lot of contextual understanding. So that is putting in context one piece of research. The other thing we did to try to understand this is in the, the research that Comedy Central had done was there was there was a conflict in the narrative. So you have media telling us all that millennials are post-racial. It was one of the most popular headlines right after um, the last five years. Millennials are post-racial. Um, but the research was showing something very different. Um, so now there's a gap in terms of what we're hearing and what millennials are hearing and what they're feeling. And to understand this gap and put it into context, we did a historical examination to look at the milestones and markers around conversations around race, ethnicity, and multiculturalism. And what we can understand now is that multiculturalism is over-celebrated as being successful by certain people in power. And these narratives and understanding this journey helps put into context the insights that we already heard to start to have a greater story about what these fans were trying to communicate but maybe couldn't access because they're also part of this culture as well. And the other thing we did is we relied on experts. Um, experts who are in a unique position to have insight into something very complicated that we would never be able to replicate ourselves. So for example, we talked to professors who have taught at the same university for 20 years, and they have conversations with 19, 20-year-old women and men over 20 years about race. They're in a unique position to tell us firsthand their own observations around challenges or unique conversations, things that we could never replicate or access. But now we have their perspective to put into context all the other insights that we heard. So through this, we're starting to now be able to better understand things that we have already learned. Um, right, so once we combined um, all of our great consumer work with this truly remarkable cultural analysis that Tasha worked on with us, uh, we arrived at a whole lot of understanding. Whew. Um, thank goodness. Um, it would take more than a few, uh, we've got a minute left to uh, share them, but we're going to go through these three highlights really quickly. First of all, if you've done multicultural research, you, you know there's no such thing as a multicultural millennial. Um, and if you're saying that, it's because you're looking at it from a white outlook. Um, you know, otherwise, they're all just millennials. We need to understand them all. Um, second, you know, humor takes on different functions depending on uh, the ethnic communities. Yes, some comedy is universally funny, but sometimes uh, you had to be there to get it. That was one of the big understandings that we found. And then lastly what we found, and this is kind of what Tasha was talking about, most importantly, race is one of 
all millennials strongest sources of tension and misunderstanding today. Young people are confused about race. They have very few outlets that openly address um, and can help them work out their tensions. So this tension and confusion actually for Comedy Central presents itself as an opportunity. Our brand is largely defined um, by its use of humor to address and diffuse social tensions. So um, again, those are just some of the highlights that we found. So again, we did it, we have success, we got it, and now we needed to share it. This was gonna be hard too, because if you think talking about race is uncomfortable and difficult, telling your content creators and your brand managers that they're not really doing race very well, that's really, really difficult, really, really uncomfortable. And so that is where we turn to story. So story is very effective when you're dealing with very messy, complex ideas that don't fit in a nice, tight box. So when you bring in elements of story, it's able to create empathy for the listening audience, which is exactly what we need in this situation. So a few things that we employed is um, really start from perspective of empathy for your audience. So you have a group of young black men, young Hispanic men, young white men who don't feel understood by your brand, and you have a group of executives who don't necessarily understand this group either to the extent you want them to. But you have to have empathy now for both groups of people and bring them into your narrative because you're trying to connect these two perspectives together, not just trying to force one perspective on another. Um, so way to do that is to widen the narrative or the setting. So bring the executives into the story, make them part of the narrative. We're all in the same side, we're all product of the society and culture, so we're all part of the stage that's been set. Now let's talk about how to move forward. That way you're not putting someone on the defense. So the other thing is to positively raise the stakes. This is very simple, which is we're not getting any more white. Okay, <laughs> so you can't put it any more simple than that, but you can show the trajectory over time with great data to show what is gonna happen if this problem is not addressed. Now when I say positively raise the stakes, you wanna do this right in the beginning because you want to have stake for having to solve this problem, but you don't wanna do it in a way where it's fear-based, you wanna do it in a way where you're creating inspiration for the opportunity to come so you're not putting your audience on the defensive. The fourth thing is use of illustration to explain complex ideas. So there was a lot of complexity, as Shannon talked about. So how do we use diagrams sometimes when we're explaining something very complicated? Um, so in non-white communities, community gives birth to the humor. More often in white communities, humor gives birth to the community. So these are two different frameworks that we diagrammed, and I won't explain them here because we don't have time, but doing these diagrams helps convey complex ideas. And then the last thing is the use of an accessible metaphor. So metaphors are really effective because they have staying power. So long after the presentation is gone, the metaphor is what lives and stays on, and it gives executives shared access to see something in a similar way. So in this case, we used the metaphor of a balloon with lots of tension and a pin that's about to pop it because this pin represents Comedy Central's opportunity and the balloon is the built up tension that youth has about race and the role that Comedy Central can play in that opportunity. Absolutely, so just to wrap it up, um, you know, once we were finally able to bring, you know, this great cultural analysis in with our great, uh, uh, consumer research and crafting a really, really good story. Uh, you know, we had a new understanding of our situation and our opportunity. We were able to save that gigantic research investment, and we were able to present our research with confidence. And most importantly, we, we were able to move forward with um, clarity and a more complete picture of the entire millennial audience. And that's it. Thank you.